Okay, finishing up our last unit in our uh, semester here. Chapter 7 deals with transcendentals, and it begins with taking derivatives of inverse functions. But first, we have to be able to find inverse functions. Here's some Algebra 2 and AMA review. Uh, a function is 1 to 1 with the domain D and range R, 1 to 1. If whenever A is not equal to B in the domain, whenever you have two different X values, uh, F of A will not equal F of B in the range. The two Y values are different. And uh, so really we could have a horizontal line test to be able to determine if a function is in fact one to one. So let's say that I gave you a y equals x squared here, obviously a parabola. Uh, we could draw a horizontal line and see that we'd get two intersection points. What that means is with two different x values, our y values have repeated. That won't be a one-to-one -one function. So we could just say not one-to-one. Uh, let's say that we took a look at uh, the natural log of x function. And you remember its shape right here. Uh, of course, it's a function because it does pass the vertical line test. But draw any horizontal line through, and you would only intersect at one time. OK, so from calculus, from a calculus perspective, if a function is strictly increasing, and that means, look underneath, that the derivative is always positive. If your function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, always going down, that would mean that your derivative is negative always. Then the function is one-to-one. -one. Look, let's be honest. It's not always the easiest thing to do a graphical analysis. Some graphs are very complex. But if you could quickly take a derivative and see that your function is always positive or always negative for that derivative, that would indicate that you would have a one-to-one -one function. Now, of course, right now you might think, OK, so one-to-one -one functions, we can determine if, if that is the case, if a function is one-to-one -one or not. But the bigger issue is why are we concerned with that? If a function is one-to-one, -one, it has an inverse. So look, an inverse is the undo button, so to speak. Uh, if you've got a one-to-one -one function, this inverse symbol, uh, f inverse of x, uh, will exist. And uh, we're going to know that if we have an undo button, if we call g the inverse function, Look what's going to happen. When you take g of f of x, it means start at x, do some work on that, then do function g's work on it. If you're right back to where you started, you've just undone your work. That's why you could call an inverse function an undo button, so to speak. And uh, that same thing would be true working in, a, in another perspective in terms of y if you started with g of y. But listen, undoubtedly what you're probably jumping back to for Algebra 2 and for AMA is uh, sometimes you'll be asked to find an inverse. And uh, no doubt about it, we're going to have that take place here. Let's say I give you y is equal to 6x plus 1. By the way, what's the derivative of that? That would be 6, which is always positive, isn't it? Uh, so I'd be guaranteed to have a one-to-one -one function. I could find an inverse. Do you guys remember how you find an inverse? Yeah, switch or flip x and y, you know it. Then what? Solve for y, you got it. And real quickly, you could say I'm going to subtract a 1. Next, you might say, well, you know, maybe put 6y over here. You could leave it on the right side. That would be fine. But then you can divide both sides by 6. Guys, you found it. You found an inverse function right here. Take a look at number two. Number two is incredibly similar, but with a huge, huge little trick to it. 
I think immediately kids will say, you just talked about a parabola. Look at the very beginning. The first thing you talked about with the horizontal line test was a parabola. We're in trouble here. You're giving us a parabola. You can't do it. You can't find an inverse. But guys, look at this. It's half a parabola. It's half of a parabola. So in other words, they're saying, look, we're only going to consider negative x values. Okay, and uh, if I gave you 1 minus x squared, that's the same thing as negative x squared plus 1. Uh, we're moving our curve up 1. And of course, uh, it's a parabola that opens downward. Just visually looking at this curve now, would we pass the horizontal line test? Yes. So actually, we could find an inverse here. Let's do that. Now, so important for us to remember, just as you guys correctly pointed out very well, that the very first thing you want to do is switch x and y. And now let's solve for our new y. Well, I'll tell you what, how about we do a little switcheroo here. We add a y squared to both sides or bring a y squared to the left. Simultaneously, let's subtract an x. And now comes the confusing part. Kids are going to say, wait, take a square root. And someone else will say, no, you mean your square roots, plural, plus minus. And then kids will look at that and say, oh, my word, which one do we choose? Or do we choose both, perhaps? Well, guys, you're not going to be able to choose both. Uh, you might guess if you're finding an inverse function, does anybody remember the symmetry that would occur with a function in its inverse? They are symmetrical about? Yes, look at that. Visually, what you would see is, well, my goodness, if I were to flip that curve over the line y equals x, I would have my inverse function. That's a little bit of a hint. But trust me, you don't even need to jump that far. Look at this little inequality, which is so important to help you out. X is less than or equal to zero. Guys, what's the very first thing we always did finding an inverse? What was the very first step? We switched X and Y. We switched X and Y. Wait a minute, don't forget this guy. Oh, you mean Y is less than or equal to zero. Which one do you think we're going to choose, the positive or the negative? The negative. Hey, look at that. There's your inverse. And uh, real quickly, you could get this thing graphed and you'd be fine. By the way, this video is rather short and we're battling time, of course. Uh, before this unit's over, I'm going to show you how your calculator can draw an inverse on the draw menu. Maybe some of you have seen that before, all right? And if not, we'll talk about it. But hey, we are in a calculus class. Undoubtedly, you're thinking, yeah, these are the good old days. But wait a minute. Isn't there something to do about derivatives here? And yes. Look, this is what I'd like for you to, to copy down in blue right over here. Draw yourself a function at, maybe make it look something like e to the x. By the way, you could draw it however you want. But make a definite point, preferably somewhere easy in the first quadrant, uh, a comma b. You might have noticed I'm also sketching in a tangent line. I'm drawing a tangent line in there. And you might wonder, OK, so why are you doing that? Well, you'll see in just a moment. You guys just correctly told me very, very well that a function and its inverse are always symmetrical about the line y equals x. So rather than write the inverse as f negative 1 of x, let's instead more simply call it g of x. That's going to greatly simplify our notation. And g is the inverse of f, and f is the inverse of g. 
But stating the obvious, if a comma b lies on f, switch your x and y values and you'd have b comma a would have to lie on g. And uh, if you were to quickly sketch what the inverse would look like, you'd get this nice symmetry here and you'd have b comma a. The very first thing I want to point out to you is that the tangent line slopes that are drawn in here, or the tangent lines, I should say, one is drawn at x equals a for the f function. The other tangent line was drawn when x was equal to b. And that's by the nature of the symmetry of your two points. Now, usually kids will look at this and they'll say, okay, well, I've drawn pictures like this in AGT and AMA. Why are we drawing those pictures? How would that help? Well, derivatives are tangent line slopes, so maybe we could get some help here. And look at what I put a, a little box around, and I'm going to circle it again right here. If you've got a comma b lying on f and b comma a lies on g, here is a bold, bold, bold kind of a statement. The derivative of function g, the inverse function, at b, the tangent line slope, in other words, is the reciprocal, it's 1 over f prime of a. Now, some of you might be looking at that saying, I don't even think I believe that. Well, tell you what, I've got a little geometer's sketch pad demo to help you out. This is something I made a number of years ago. Uh, it's got in blue the graph of e to the x. In red, I just told this program to draw an inverse. And I have AB, line AB, is a tangent line slope. And uh, line A prime D is another tangent line slope. I guess what I'm trying to show you is as I drag, as I drag point A around, you can see that your tangent line slope changes for both the function and the inverse function. But look at this bottom left-hand corner. The multiplications of their slopes always are going to equal 1. Now, how on earth can you get a number to multiply to another number and get a 1? They have to be reciprocals, right? So maybe that would make you believe that a little bit more, but sometimes kids would say, why is it the case that they're reciprocals? Let's go back, guys. Tangent line slope. Way, way, way long ago, you probably were in junior high. Undoubtedly, you were in junior high. Your first lesson on slope, your teacher would have said, slope is rise over run. And then undoubtedly, they said, change in y over change in x. And kids would be like, cool, that's what we got here. Now I want you to look at this other tangent slope. Wait a minute, isn't the whole idea of working with inverses to switch x and y? Wait a minute. Oh my goodness. They are reciprocals of each other. You see that? If you switch x and y, all of a sudden you'd say, well, the slope right there is just going to be the flip of the other one. Oh my word. Now granted, those reciprocals, of course, are occurring at different x values. The tangent line was drawn for function f when x was equal to a. The tangent line for your inverse function was drawn when x was equal to b. I guess what I really, really, really want to point out to you is that these x values are, of course, different. You're drawing tangent line slopes at different x values. They're symmetric points, but this is how we can work through some of these problems. Now, we're about to jump to example three. It looks like we're going to run out of time on our video, which is fine. We'll be able to pick up with part two in just a moment. 
But I think you're going to see, sometimes you want to have this formula.